sort of conjures up rubber chicken and stuff like that. But um, I thought maybe I'd just tell you how how Terme came to be a little bit. Um, you can never tell where a thing gets started. Um, back in the early 90s, a crime reporter named David Simon wrote a book called Homicide, A Year on the Killing Streets of Baltimore. Uh, David spent a year with the homicide detectives of uh, Baltimore and, and wrote this book. And it was published, um, sold a few copies, it was a good book. And it happened to be that Barry Levinson, the director, who is from Baltimore, as you know, optioned the book and somehow thought it would make a television show. And somehow he talked to NBC into thinking it might make a television show. And Barry didn't know anything about television, so he, he was told he needed something called a showrunner to run that show. And he ended up hiring Tom Fontana, which was very fortuitous, because Tom is the person who gave me my break a long time ago on St. Elsewhere. And uh, a couple seasons into that show, uh, he hired me, and he also said to David Simon, would you like to try your hand at writing a script? And David still had his day job at the Baltimore Sun, and he said, yeah, sure. And the first script he wrote for Tom was a script he wrote with his friend David Mills. So all those things sort of had to happen before I could meet David Simon or David Mills, which I did in Baltimore. And we started talking about New Orleans almost immediately, because I'd had a house here since 89, and David had an interest in New Orleans music and had been visiting here. He started coming down to New Orleans, even stayed in my house a few times at Jazz Fest and where you And we did the usual conversation about New Orleans, which was, gee, wouldn't it be great to do a show in New Orleans? And how come nobody's ever done one right? And how come they always shoot, you know, the streetcar and Bourbon Street and <coughs> a big overhead fan going lazily circling and, uh, people sweating. <laughs> and uh, but we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what it could be. And in television, there's something called the franchise. Most shows are cop shows or doctor shows or lawyer shows or some combination of those where there are life and death stakes. And there are very few shows that don't kind of fit in those paradigms. And uh, we didn't know that we wanted to do that. But we really, it was all pie in the sky anyway because we didn't have any, any way to do that. <clears throat> So I jumped to 1995, and I just finished doing Five Years of Law and Order. David was in, about to do the fourth season of The Wire, and he asked me to join him, which was great. And I went to Baltimore that summer, 2005, and we started talking about it seriously. And, and now we could really talk about it seriously because David had had such a success with The Wire and had such a good relationship with HBO. And he was looking towards the end of the wire and what to do next. <clears throat> and so we started talking about New Orleans again. And we still didn't know what it was. Well, what would the show be? We didn't, neither of us wanted to do a cop show. Really what interested us about New Orleans was the culture of New Orleans. The people, uh, the architecture, the food, the music, of course. The way people talk. Uh, but you've got to hang a show on something, right? And then the storm, and that threw everything into question, of course, uh, as you all know. And for a while, I think we were just kind of funnest. I felt personally that we missed our opportunity to do a show in New Orleans. That nobody knew if New Orleans was going to come back, and if it came back, what it would be. <clears throat> oh, I should back up a little bit. I missed the step. In that summer, at one point, David came to me and said, it could be about musicians. And I said, okay. And uh, that's all the idea we had. <clears throat> it's still not enough of an idea to go to anybody and say, well, we went lucky to do a show about musicians in New Orleans. That's not, that's not a real pitch. So um, the storm happened, and I thought, well, that's that. <coughs> but David, uh, had a little more distance on it, I guess, or something. And he said, you know, we, this is a way to frame the show. Uh, people coming back after the storm. And I, I still wasn't sure, but I said, okay. And we went up to HBO, and I've told this story a lot. We went into, it must have been November 2005, just a couple months after the storm. 
And we went to Carolyn Strauss and we said, we'd like to do a show about musicians and a few other people. We knew it, it had to be, there had to be some other people in the mix. A chef, a Mardi Gras, and a chief. And Carolyn Strauss said, I've never been in New Orleans. I have no idea what you're talking about. What is a Mardi Gras anyhow? <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, this is. <laughs> and then she said, but go ahead and write a pilot script. And I, I walked out and I said, did she say we could write a pilot script? And I said, yeah, I knew she'd say that. <laughs> um, it was because of the strength of, of HBO's relationship with David that, that she was willing to take a chance on a pilot script. So we did. Now, jump ahead two and a half years, we finally turned the script in in 2008. And by that time, Carolyn Strauss was long gone and there was a new regime in place. Uh, Richard Putler, Mike Lombardo, <coughs> Sue Nagel. And I thought, well, you know, what happens typically in Hollywood is if there's any sort of change at the, in, uh, in the uh, administration, if you will, all the old projects get thrown out because nobody can take credit for them. And I thought, you know, we missed our, we missed our window. Uh, but in fact, they embraced it enthusiastically, and I give them all the credit in the world for that. And uh, they said, go write some scripts. And even before, so we can see what the show is, because it was still... Uh, I sent my agent the pilot script and he called me up laughing and said, it's, it, I love it, it's so low concept, it's no concept. <laughs> and uh, it, it's very, I mean, it's, we didn't, what we ended up doing was a show about culture, about architecture and people and language and music and food without hanging it. We don't, we don't have a, a doctor, we don't have a cop. We, we do have a lawyer, but she represents musicians, so. Um, it's very, it's very, it's odd. It's odd in TV terms, and it, it was very brave of HBO, and I can't imagine anybody else doing it. And I'm very grateful for that. It's sort of lightning in the bottle when they decided to do it. So we, we went out to start to write some scripts so they could see what the show was. And before we even finished doing that, they said, you know what, we're, we're just going to go ahead and make the pilot. 